It's now been officially one year since Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gerskovich was arrested in Russia in an action that the State Department calls a wrongful detention. The journalist is charged with espionage, something he, the Wall Street Journal, and the U.S. government says is categorically false. Since his arrest, Russian courts have denied him bail and rejected all attempts to appeal. He has yet to face trial. The courts have so far extended his pretrial detention five times, the last until at least June 30th. Jeremy Berk joins me now. He's a friend of Evan Gerskovich. So, Jeremy, I want to actually show our viewers the cover of the Wall Street Journal today, a giant blank space with the headline, his story should be here. Tell us what this last year has been like. Yeah, first off, thank you so much for the opportunity to share Evan's story. Um, any little bit of attention we can get absolutely helps, so we appreciate it. Um, this last year has been really hard and, and emotional for, for many reasons. And, and what I'm going through as a friend of Evan's is one iota of what his parents and his sister are going through. Um, but look, I mean, we have to stay engaged. We have to stay busy. And one thing that we can do as his friends and, and as his family is speak out and continue to put pressure on our government here at home to bring him home safely and swiftly. And I understand that you also write to Evan regularly. When was the last time you heard from your friend? How's he doing? Yeah, so the last time I heard from him um, was at the end of January. Uh, he is doing okay, um, perhaps incredibly. And I think that's through both, you know, his personality and, and a testament to his willpower. Um, he's meditating, he's reading books, he's practicing his Russian. Um, he has a little television um, in a cell that he can, where he can watch, you know, sports and, and Russian language TV. And, um, you know, I think it's really hard for him. He's confined in a cell for 23 hours a day. But despite that, he spends more of his time reassuring us and his family that he's OK than uh, we are re reassuring him. Well, what does he want the world to know? Look, I think on the one hand, for us, the story is about Evan. You know, we don't want this to be a sort of opaque international incident. We want to humanize Evan, mm -hmm. to center what an amazing friend he is, son, brother, what a great guy he is and how much we miss him. The second thing I think is Evan has become a symbol for press freedom everywhere. As governments like Russia crack down on the free press, Evan's story uh, is a testament to how important that is and how important that message is. And that's one that I think he is happy to support for as long as it takes to get him home. Uh, core to his being, I understand it. And and dozens of lawmakers from every party, every level of government have been putting a spotlight on Evan's story, marking the state. What's next in the effort to try and get him and other wrongfully detained Americans home? We have been assured that the Biden administration, the State Department, congressional officials have been working as hard as possible to get him home. Um, unfortunately, it's been underscored how complex these negotiations are. Um, I won't go into that. I'm not, I'm not an expert on Russia-U.S. negotiations. But at the same time, you know, this is really a nonpartisan issue. It is a foreign adversary who has, for all intents and purposes, kidnapped my friend and is holding him hostage. And that's something that everyone here at home can get behind, I believe. And we, we are feeling the support from American people. We are feeling support from the government. But um, at the end of the day, there's only one metric of success, and that's Evan being back here with us. And we're still waiting for that day. And Jeremy, you said uh, part of your effort is to humanize him, to make sure that people know that Evan's a, a real human being. So when you think of your friend, what are some of the words that come to mind? Yeah, I don't say this lightly. I mean, Evan, like I'm, I'm smiling just thinking about all the fun times we've had together. He, he's one of my favorite friends in the entire world. He's a true extrovert. He's gregarious. He's a goofball in his personal life, but he takes his work extremely seriously, and he's able to navigate both those worlds unlike anyone I know. Um, one of the most unique traits about him is how well he listens. And I think in 2024, uh, that's a really rare trait, and that's something that I appreciate about him so much, and, and I miss him very, very much. Well, Jeremy Burke, thank you. I hope that many people are listening to your words now. Thank you so much for the opportunity again. Absolutely.